Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to answer one of the most common questions I get asked, which is, where can I go find fossils? This video is in response to a YouTube member, ChillGuys123, who posted the question, Hey, I'm pretty young and I love paleontology and fossils. Do you have any places that are good for finding dino fossils for beginners? Now, Chill Guys 123 is from the Ontario region of Canada, so I said that I would use his area for this video. Now, you could take the academic approach and spend months studying geology and more months conducting field exploration and mapping your exposures in order to find your own fossils. Or you could take the easy approach and let somebody show you. The easiest and best method is to join a local fossil or mineral club and join them on their outings. The entire purpose of these clubs is to help people learn about the geology of their area, so why not use their expertise? The simplest method is to start with an internet search. So for Chill Guys 123, he would need to do a search for Ontario Fossil Clubs, which gives us a few results. Okay, now since I don't know exactly where uh, Chill Guys lives, uh, you know, we could assume that maybe this is the closest to his area. And if you're not sure, of course, you know, you can always just click on the link and see where they're at and what they're about. Okay, but what if you don't have a club that's local to your area? Making an internet search for fossil sites in your area will usually get you some at least general locations that are nearby. Now, one website that I found very helpful uh, in my own search here is uh, fossilspot.com. And so when we click on it for Ontario fossil sites, this gives you a whole lot of sites. And it gives you a lot of information about each site also. It'll give you the location, uh, county if applicable, state, any uh, detailed directions or notes about it, what the age of the fossils and the bedrock are in that area, the name of the formation, and it tells you what types of fossils that you can expect to find there. One helpful place is internet forums. Uh, the fossil forum has a lot of uh, great information. So doing a search for fossil sites in Ontario, you can pull up information of people who are asking that question and the answers that uh, they have received. And from here at U Waterloo, uh, there's a really good download available. It's a PDF. And it talks all about the uh, kind of fossils that are, you can find in the area of Ontario. And they even give you a nice little color-coded map of the rock ages for the different parts. Another step to finding your own fossil sites is to spend time looking at satellite images of your area. You typically want to find places that have elevation changes and exposed bedrock. So for here in the Ontario area, if we start here, and so we look here in Arcona, now see so you can see here, you got quite a bit of naturally exposed bedrock here and here along this shoreline here. Now I'm not telling you to go hunt here. I'm just using this as an example that this is the kind of thing you're looking for when you're doing a uh, satellite image search. You want to look for places that have a lot of good exposure. Now besides just the satellite imagery, you can also choose a terrain feature And here, this will show you the basic contour lines 
So you can tell by the look of these lines that this is flat and this is a hillside right here and that this is obviously a much steeper ravine going down here. So the steeper it is, the more chance that it has to uh, have rock exposure. Okay, now if you're doing this on your own without a club or a more experienced mentor, one of the crucial things you have to make sure is that you're doing it legally. Every country has different laws on collecting fossils, and those laws even change between states and regions and provinces and depending on uh, the land status. Because land could be federal, it could be private, it could be state, it could be park. So that's one of the things that you need to look at. Every change in land status changes what you can legally pick up. So you need to spend some time doing internet searches for the fossil collecting laws of the specific areas you plan to be at. Okay, so now that you've done your research and you've identified an area with the likely exposures that you want to go hunt, comes a very crucial question. Who owns the land? If your area is anything like mine, that means 99% of the land is privately owned, which means you have to get permission from the landowner in order to go hunt. Never, never, never trespass on land to go hunt fossils. But the biggest question for most people here is how do you find who owns a piece of land? And that can get tricky. Now, I figured out how to find land ownership here in the United States. But for our research today here in Canada, I don't have a solid answer. My suggestions for in Canada is to look up your local land management offices. The ownership of private land has to be recorded somewhere official. For my research in Canada, you want to look for something called land registry offices. So that is where I'd start. And if they don't have the information you need, they'd be a lot more likely to be able to point you in the right direction to find your answers. So what if you're in the United States and you need to look up land ownership? I highly recommend an app called OnX. This phone app was originally intended for hunters. It's a subscription-based service, but the cost isn't very much, and for the use you get out of it, I think it's highly worth the small amount that it costs. But I'm going to cover how to best use this app in another video. Okay, so now at this point, you've done your research, you know what you can collect, you know who owns the land, and you've got your permission to be there. So the question now is, what gear do you take? Now, I'm sure a lot of people have visions of out, outfitting themselves like a miner with picks and shovels, but the truth is you don't really need all that. You won't need anything that won't fit into a small backpack. In fact, the most important things to bring are more about the search than the fossils. Make sure you pack some common sense outdoor gear. A wide-brimmed hat to keep the sun off your face and neck. A long sleeve shirt and long pants as well. Yes, especially in summer. Keeping the sun off will keep you cooler and prevent sunburn, and it will protect against general scrapes from falls or just sitting on the ground as you hunt. Sturdy hiking shoes and lightweight gloves should also be worn. And in your pack, you need to make sure that you carry water. If it's really going to be hot, carry some extra water. Also, keep a small first aid kit. It doesn't have to be fancy, just a few sizes and types of band-aids, some antibiotic ointment, a roll of gauze, and some tape will cover the majority of the bumps and scrapes you're likely to encounter. After this, the most commonly needed tools would be a small flat-bladed screwdriver for prying, and a small set of cheap paint brushes, some small plastic bags for placing your fossils in, and a small notebook for keeping track of what you find and where you found it. And lastly is maybe, maybe a geology hammer. Practically all of your hunting is going to be looking for surface exposed fossils. You won't have to worry about breaking rocks or excavating fossils out of the ground, at least not yet. So, there you have it. With this information, you can go out and begin hunting your very own fossils.
But I promise, after you begin to understand the nature of the geology and the fossils, you're never going to look at the ground under your feet the same again. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything helpful, please hit that like button for me. If you would like to stay up with the latest videos as I put them out, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time.